Ow. <coughs> ow. The word for the day is ow. You ever have one of those times in your life when you just feel like everything is saying, Yankee, go home? <laughs> I fucking hurt. So, um, I had some, um, cuff tea? So I like Indian food, right? And, um, oh, so while I've been here, well, while I've been in Thailand and Cambodia, I've had a decent amount of Indian food. And there's an Indian food place down the road. And so they had uh, this uh, kofti stuff. I think it's kofti. It's like, um, kind of like a stew with cheese in it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like stew with cheese with roasted cashew nuts. Mmm, tasty. I had that yesterday for lunch. And then after that, eh, wasn't feeling the best. I figured, eh, just bloating or whatever. And then it was time for dinner. And I literally went to a restaurant for dinner. But then while I was sitting there waiting for the dinner, I was like, I don't really feel like eating. So I asked them to box it up for me. And then like last night, I just started getting this horrible splitting headache. And then I woke up. I was on the toilet for 45 minutes with diarrhea. I was like, okay. Well, hey, 45 minutes of diarrhea. That cleans out the system. Uh, and then I went back to bed. And I got up. Another 20 minutes of diarrhea. It cleans out the system. Then I went back to bed. Then I woke up. Spent like 20 minutes of vomiting into the toilet. And, uh, yeah. I feel like shit. So, sadly, sadly, this is my last day here in Siam Reap. It's too bad. My wife and I were going to go and, um, oh, oh, fuck, I do hurt. Oh, we are going to go and take a look at some of the lesser known temples. Um, so, she's actually doing that now. Um, again, this is just food poisoning. So, she's off spending the day looking at the lesser known temples. And I'm sitting in here in a hotel room with a splitting headache I'm hoping this will go away <laughs> so um, yeah yeah as far as the real world of coming to travel to Southeast Asia or whatever um, again one of the things I'm trying to do with these videos is show you folks how it is how it really is um, and so I have to say my wife has stayed completely healthy my wife has been utterly and completely healthy for these three weeks um, so she's doing well. Um, I, on the other hand, have been to the hospital for cellulitis and now have it's a really painful case of food poisoning all within three weeks. So, what are you going to do? Uh, but the one thing, the one warning that I will give you is Cambodia kind of lulls you into a sense of security. Um, like when I backpack through India, you were always worried about food. Like, actually, the worst food poisoning I ever got in my life, which was horrible, um, was actually alu gobi. And alu gobi is fucking cauliflower and potatoes. It's one thing if you have a really good steak and then you get sick after it. But man, when you have, like, stewed cauliflower and potatoes and that's what makes you... Ugh. But anyways. But when I was there, and I got sick in India. So I was in India for four months. And probably got food poisoning three or four times there. Bad food poisoning. Um, but here, like coming over here, so like when you're in India, you, you're always on your guard just because it's India. No offense to Indians, but look out your window, you understand what I'm saying. Um, like in, in Thailand, um, as far as food is concerned, they're actually very, very, very clean there. Um, they have been for a long time. Like even when I was there 11 years ago, they had all these signs everywhere, like, you know, hygiene and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, it's just a government policy and they've, they've really done a very good job there for at least food, uh, hygienic food. The thing is you come to Cambodia and you're so used to that whole Thailand thing. And especially you're here in Siam Reap, which seems like a big old normal tourist attraction. Um, and you let your guard down with food. Like when I really think about it, Kofti or whatever the hell it is probably wasn't the best like if I was worried about getting sick see if you're not worried about getting sick it was an awesome it was awesome but if you are worried about getting sick probably wasn't the best thing 
Um, and so I think that would be the one thing that I would say if you're here in Cambodia. And even like I say, Siam Reap, everything seems nice and beautiful and all that kind of stuff. But oh my God, I'm in pain. I'm in so much pain. And again, if I've been worried about it, I would not have eaten. I would not have eaten that. And that's one of the problems they're saying right now with this heat wave. And again, I I've, I've, I heard the warnings. But you know, I'm not eating meat while I'm here. Vegetarian, not vegan. While I've been here, I ate meat once, but that was. Uh, but one of the things they're saying with the heat wave is one of the issues is that it's um, like I guess uh, it's very hard to keep a lot of foods here cold. Uh, even during the normal times. And so with this heat wave where it's been over 40 degrees Celsius, basically 100 degrees Fahrenheit um, for two months or whatever, uh, they're running into more and more um, hygiene issues. And again, what you have to be careful about when you're traveling, like I can't explain it to you like when you're wandering down Siam Reap, is, is Cambodia is one of the poorest countries in the world. And you know that. I know that. Right? You go out into the... You've seen the video footage I've done. And so you go out into the wilds and... You see, I mean, houses that look like something that we would make a tree house for a kid back in these states. Not being, not exaggerating, like literally, you see some of the houses these people live in, and you're like, huh. <laughs> in the states, that would be considered a tree house. Um, and so you know that out there. But again, like you come into Siam Reap, um, and everything is, I mean, it's got a crap ton of tuk-tuks and that stuff. But it seems pretty... <sighs> Seems pretty developed, I guess you would say. Let's <laughs> say so you don't think about the food. Uh, you don't think about the food. So anyways, my wife said I'm not allowed to do a vlog today. And so um, I'm not doing a full-fledged vlog. But I figured, I figured since we're doing this shit live, since we're like, we're, you're seeing how it is in the real world, might as well, uh, might as well talk into this camera while I still hurt. Uh, I think it was some Advil. I was surprised. A lot of times Advil doesn't do a lot for me. But um, the Advil's really cutting the headache. And my wife made sure I don't I don't have any spine pain. It's all headache. My stomach's actually feeling a little better now. And I feel a little warm. I think one of the worst parts, though, like when you get food poisoning, one of the hardest parts is when you have to go back out to eat again. Right? So I haven't had a meal. So I... The last meal I had was lunch yesterday, so I missed dinner and I missed breakfast, which means in about two hours. Oh, I really do need to go out there and um, get something for lunch, something solid for lunch. And I tell you what, one of the hardest things with getting food poisoning is you just don't want to fucking eat anything. <laughs> It's like, you know you need to. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm looking at the clock. And it's like, I know in like two hours, I need to put something a little bit solid in my system. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't. Because again, like when you're traveling, it's not like you're going home. It's not like, oh, I had a food in the restaurant last night that made me stick. And now I'm going to go home and have my organic oatmeal or whatever. So I got to go back out there. I got to hope to hell. Whatever the hell I eat doesn't do this to me. Food poisoning sucks. Food poisoning sucks. So. Anyways. <laughs> Is there anything else to say? No, I really know. Yeah. Another day on the road. Another day on the road. So tomorrow. So I'm just here in the bed all day. I'd imagine. Tomorrow we hop a hop. 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 Tomorrow we hop a flight to Bangkok, um, and that'll be Monday. So we fly out of here to Bangkok on Air Asia, which is like their Ryanair, their Southwest. Um, so it's not too bad. It's like a hundred bucks from here to Bangkok. Uh, turns a nine nine hour bus ride into a one hour flight that like you can't get screwed on. Um, so we're going to fly out tomorrow and probably go back and stay in the Hotel Riva Surya, the one we stayed in Bangkok before. Uh, and then 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, uh, we fly out of Bangkok to go back to Dulles. And then we'll get to Dulles. And then I will feed my fish. And I'll be happy to know that the food I eat is good. And it's funny, but it is a good experience being out here. 
Um, makes you a little more humble. Not much, obviously. <laughs> Not much more humble. A little more humble. <laughs> makes you want to be a little more humble. But again, like, I think this is, like, one thing, like, people in the first world, like, don't understand with some of these countries. Is I mean, like I say, that, like... Yeah, I mean, think about it. I've been out three weeks. And... <laughs> cellulitis once and uh and um food poisoning once um and this is just three weeks i mean can you imagine if you actually lived in some of these areas all right uh and so it does give you sympathy when i say when you see all the stuff going on in europe right now and you see all the stuff with migrations and stuff again i don't know what the hell the answer to that stuff is but at least when you come out here and you see things as they are at least gives you a tiny bit more sympathy. Yeah. Yeah, because like back home. I can't remember. I mean, food poisoning in the United States. Is, at least for me, is rare. At least for me, is very rare. So. Oh, and it also, for all these non GMO organic hippies out there. <laughs> This is also one of the points, and this is one of the things like I get into a little pissing contest with my wife over every once in a while because you know she, everything should be non GMO, organic, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I think people forget there's a reason why our food gets processed in many of the ways that it does. Um, you know, there's a difference between, I think people get confused on that. There's a difference between eating Pop Tarts and Hot Pockets versus like GMO food and some of the pasteurization process and all that kind of stuff. And especially in the United States, it's so, it's so easy to forget how bad food hygiene used to be. So like if you're in the U.S. and you basically know nobody who ever gets sick from eating food then it's really easy to think that there's way too many regulations and by God, the government should stay at the hell out of your business. Whereas you come to some other places that don't have the same food <laughs> hygiene requirements. <laughs> You're like, I miss my food hygiene. I miss my government regulations. <laughs> oh, Democrats, take me away. To your, your regulations. Anyways. I don't have to say. So, <sighs> hope the pain goes away. I hope the pain goes away. All right, with that, I'll catch you guys hopefully tomorrow. I'm not feeling so loopy and in pain. <laughs>